Hello, and welcome to day four of our Let's Create Roblox series, where I show you how to make a Roblox game. Last time, we had Area 1 completed, and we laid out Area 2 with our new kill parts and our moving parts, and finally started Area 3 with a checkpoint. And so today, we're finally going to get into scripting, and we will give these kill parts some behaviors. So the behavior we want to aim for is when the player touches any red part or actually any part named kill part uh, the, their health will be set to zero and they will die and start back at the last checkpoint they have reached so if you remember I, I named my parts kill part with a capital K capital P and no space all the rest was lowercase uh, that's important because once we get into scripts we're going to access these by their name and it's going to be an exact match so it's it doesn't matter if you didn't name your parts the same as mine, but you want to make sure you keep in mind what you did name. Uh, and then when we get into scripting, you can use the name that you selected. Otherwise, you can rename your parts to kill part. So without further ado on that, we can get into it. If we look into Explorer, the Explorer window, if we scroll down below replicated storage, we'll see server scripts service. Server script service is where we're going to place a couple scripts, and I like to group them uh, based on what they do. So we're going to be adding a behavior for kill parts, so it will behave a certain way, and in this case, when a player touches it, their health will be set to zero. So I'm going to press the plus sign next to server script service, and at the top you can search folder unless you see it. But if you don't see it, it's simple. You can type um, folder in the menu that appears all the way at the top. I think you cannot see mine. But if you click that plus sign, you should see one. And then we'll add a folder. OK, great. And now that that folder is added, we're going to rename it. And I like to give it a name that's meaningful. And so this folder will hold scripts that are behaviors. So I will call it behaviors. Once you have that named, you can go ahead and press enter. That'll give us our folder where we will place our first script. And so to place your first script, hover over that folder, press the plus that's next to it. And in the menu that appears at the top search object, we'll type script, S-C-R-I-P-T. When you type that, you might see a couple scripts appear. Uh, the one we're interested in is just script. We don't want local script and we don't want module script. So we will just click script and it'll add a script in here with the default text of print hello world. We're going to delete that, but before we do anything, we want to rename our script because as, as you can see, when we add a script, its default name is script. So if we keep adding scripts for different reasons or different purposes, then we will have a bunch of files named script and we won't really be able to navigate our project to find out which script we need to work on. So I'll rename this one kill part behavior and I can do that by clicking and then clicking again and now I'll name kill part behavior. Now that we have this named I will make the text a little larger so it's easier to see and we can start coding. So we're not going to get too much into the details of the code itself. Uh, today will be more of a uh, copy what I type. We'll talk a little bit about what we're typing, uh, but my goal today is for you to get familiar with what the code looks like that we write in Roblox. So the first thing we're going to do is add a comment. And a comment is something that Roblox disregards. It, it won't do anything with it, and it's something that we as the as the programmers can read to see what's going on in the code. So the first thing we'll do is two dashes right next to the zero key at the top are these hyphens or dashes and we want two of them. And two of them right next to each other after, with a space will denote a comment and so we can type anything we want here. And so the first thing you might say is what what is this script? And so I'll type that this is um, this adds a kill behavior to all parts 
in workspace named kill part. So that is what we will be doing in this script. And I, I dropped the new line so that uh, we can keep everything on the screen. You might not have to. Um, but when I dropped the new line, I added two more dashes so that I can continue the comment. Under that, I might maybe add some author info. So you can type author, a colon, and then you can put your name here. Your, I, I use the Roblox name. So I will use let's create series. You can type your name because you're writing yours. And then below that, we can start our code. So if you don't have this typed in yet, go ahead and pause the video. And then uh, when you resume, we'll, we'll start the, the actual code. Okay, so we'll start with writing a function, which will handle every time that our kill part is touched. And we'll, so to start a function, we'll use the word function. So F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N. Once you type that, it should turn a different color. That'll let us know that we spelled it correctly and that Roblox recognizes that it's a function. And then we're gonna name our function. So I like to give my function names meaning, give them a meaningful name. So what we intend to do or what it's for. And so this function will be, uh, this will be called every time the kill part gets touched. So I'll just say, I'll call it on kill part touched. So capital O in between. So every, the first letter of every word will be capital and there'll be no spaces. Okay, so I have on kill part touched, and uh, that'll be all one word, but each each word, each word letter of each word will be capitalized, the first letter. Then we can open a parenthesis. You can hold shift and press nine, and that'll open a parenthesis, and it should also give you that closing parenthesis. So inside of here, we need to um, kind of define what the other part is, the part that touched our kill part. And we can just, all we're going to do right now is give it a name that we can use in code. This is called a parameter. And it's okay if you don't remember all of this. Again, this is just to get an introduction to what code looks like. So it's absolutely okay if you don't understand everything going on. So inside of these parentheses, we're going to provide a name and let's, let's just call it other part. And that's all we have to type in there. And then um, use your arrow key to go to the other side of the closing parenthesis, or you can use your mouse to click. And then we'll press enter, and it should add this end keyword, which should be the same color as the function keyword. And so in between function and end, we're going to type our code of what happens when this function gets called. And so the first thing we need to do is we only want to operate if the part that touched is a player. And so we can find out if it's a player if they have a humanoid is what it's called. Um, so humanoid on, in Roblox, every player has a humanoid. So we're gonna go ahead and try to, try to make sure that the part that touched has a humanoid. So we can do that by typing the following. We'll type the word local, and that should turn the same color as function, and then since we're trying to access the humanoid, we can just name it humanoid. And so that's H-U-M-A-N-O-I-D, humanoid. And then we'll use an equal sign. And then I'm going to type the rest of the sentence, and then we'll take a pause. And you should pause the video and make sure you get caught up before we move on. So the, the rest of the sentence, or it's called a statement, the rest of the statement will look like this. We want to access this part, so we'll say other part, the same as we called it in the parameter. And we want to access its parent, because the other part that's going to touch this part is going to be like left foot or right foot or something. And we want to access its parent, which will be the player. So dot player, hopefully, nope, nope, dot parent. Hopefully the player. So other part dot parent, not player. Then we'll use a colon, which is a a weird syntax, but it's, it's specific to, well, it's definitely used in Lua, and that is how we can access um, certain functions. And so the function we're gonna try to use is find first child. And so all of those have capital first letters. So find first child. Then we're gonna open parentheses again, 
and in quotes, either single or double, I'll use single, um, we're going to type humanoid with a capital H. And that is all for this statement. So go ahead and pause the video here to get caught up to where we are now. Um, actually, I'll add, an, I'll add a new line below that and maybe another one. Um, and so now, now is a good point to pause. Go ahead and get caught up on the typing. And then you can press resume and we'll continue. Okay, so the next thing we want to do uh, after we've tried to grab this humanoid that is a child of the part that touched its parent. So once we, after we've grabbed this humanoid, we want to make sure it exists. So we're just trying to find the child. We want to make sure that we did find it. And we can do that by typing if humanoid, which is the, the same as the one above us that, that we typed. So if humanoid then... And all this is saying is if something is true, that some condition is met, then do this inside of here. If it's not true, then don't do it. So this is called an if statement. So we'll use if humanoid then, and then when we press enter, it should put it another end, and we'll have two ends down here. And in between if and end, we'll type humanoid.health equals zero. And what that'll do is say, hey, did we find humanoid? We did. Okay, let's set its health to zero. And that'll kill anything that has a humanoid that touches this part. And so one other thing I like to do is put some comments in the code that I'm working on. So maybe above the on kill part touched function, I'll type kind of what this does. And so we'll say that this is an event registered to part dot touched that kills the part dot parent sort of so that's basically what that does um, and then kind of right before this local humanoid line I'm going to write um, ensure or tr uh, try to find the humanoid of the part And then maybe above the if statement, we'll say, if we found the humanoid, set health to zero, and then in parentheses, maybe the word kill. Okay, so now's a good time to pause. Uh, get, get everything typed that you need to get typed. Definitely things that aren't comments, but in my opinion, comments are equally as uh, important, if not more important. So definitely type your comments. It's a good habit to get into. Let's go ahead and pause here and then we'll resume. Okay, and so now the last thing we need to do is make sure uh, we need to go through the entire workspace so we can actually type our thoughts as comments. So below this function, at the, on the other side of the end, I pressed enter a couple times and I'm going to type a comment to say kind of what we want to do. So we want to uh, go through the workspace, find all children that have the name kill part and attach the attach to the touched event and so that's basically what we're going to do <clears throat> so we're going to use something called a for loop and again you don't have to memorize all this stuff yet uh, it's just we're just getting an introduction but we're going to say for and then in lua a for what would be called a for each loop, we we get um, the index of what we're iterating through as well as the item. So we're going to say for i comma child, and um, i will be the index, which is like number zero, number one, number two. Child is the actual item, and we'll say in. Then there's a method uh, function that Lua gives us, and it's called i pairs. So I-P-A-I-R-S, and then use an opening parenthesis. Okay, and then inside of the parenthesis, so after using the opening parenthesis, we should get uh, the opening and then the closing as well. Inside of here, we are going to use a variable that we're going to define. 
and so the variable that we're going to define we'll call it children and so for i comma child in i pairs and inside of there we're going to use children put uh, type do and press enter and if you scroll down you should see that that adds the end keyword as well now you may notice children has this underline um, and basically what it's saying is it, it doesn't know what children is so we need to um, kind of tell it what children is and so above that for line and below the comment we can say local children equals workspace and then use a colon and say get descendants and what that's going to do is get every um, child and child's child and everything inside of workspace and so this will allow us to go through everything in workspace and then anything that matches some criteria which for, for our purposes is that it is named kill part we're going to attach the, our, our function to a touched event. So go ahead and pause here, uh, go ahead and, and get caught up, and then resume when you're ready. Okay, so inside of this for loop is what it's called. We need to see if a condition is meant, uh, met. And if you remember, Previously, we, we checked to see if a condition was met on humanoid. We wanted to make sure humanoid was found, and so we used an if statement. We're going to do the same thing in here. We're going to say if, but not humanoid. Now we're on to child. We're going to say if child.name, and that everything in Roblox has a name. We just want to see if that name is equal to kill part. So we're going to use two equal signs. And then on the other side of that, we can use single quotes, and we're going to give it the name that we expect. And the way this is read is if child.name is equal to kill part. And so then outside of the quotes, we'll write then, meaning if this condition is meant, then do something. And so what we're going to do in here is a attach our function that we made to the touched event. So child.touched, use a colon, and then, and then we'll type connect and IntelliSense or whatever shows up that kind of helps the developer uh, will let us register our on kill part touched when you if you click it from the drop down menu it's going to add these two parentheses we don't want those we only want one so child dot touched connect on kill part touched only the one set of parentheses around con from connect and that's it so for the I'll, I'll zoom out a little bit so that you can see the whole a little bit more so you can see the whole file that we have uh, maybe I'll add some comments let me just get rid of this output window I'll add some comments to say kind of what we're doing um, so this pretty much does say what we're doing this is exactly what we're doing so I'm gonna leave that alone uh, pause here get caught up on the code and then we're going to go back to the game workspace. So go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll continue when you're done. Okay, and so the last thing we need to do is test it. So I'm going to test it by, um, I'm not just going to press play, because then I would start way back there. What I'll do is zoom my camera in to where I want to start, and then if we press the drop-down arrow under play, we have an option, play here. And what that'll do is drop your character exactly where your camera is. So pressing play here, it's going to take a minute to load. And then we want to test to make sure when we touch these parts, our character dies. Looks like mine's going to take a minute to load. But you see, I, I loaded up right where my camera was. And now I'll touch a part. Ooh. And perfect. So the kill part worked. So I'll stop. You can take a moment here to play around, so if you want to pause, you can. If it's not working, here are some troubleshooting steps to take a look at. The first thing is in our code, we were checking to see if child.name is equal to kill part with a capital K, capital P, and no space. If you look in my workspace, you'll see that I have three of those, 
and they're named exactly that. Kill part with a capital K, capital P, and no space. There's no number one at the end, no number two. They're all just named kill part. So that's one thing to check. The other one is to make sure your script is located in server script service somewhere. And so I have mine in a folder called behaviors, uh, but just make sure it's not in like server storage or, or anywhere else. We want it in server script service, and then you can put it anywhere in there. And I put mine in a, in a folder. So try those two things and then press play and see if it works. Um, other things to look for if that didn't do it, is any of this text that is not gray, so not a comment. It, it needs to be, um, any of the red ones for sure, need to be definitely spelled correctly, no capitals, so function can't have a capital F. Um, and and uh, you can actually, um, you know, type this verbatim, so type it exactly like you see it. And then press play and try to touch one of your parts again and make sure it kills the player. The last thing we want to do is make sure we save. We always want to make sure we save often. So we can do that by pressing control, holding control, pressing S. If you're on a Mac, hold command and press S. Or if you're not too comfortable with the keyboard shortcuts, go ahead and press file. And from the drop down list, choose save to file. Um, and so if you did that and you got there, then uh, definitely congratulations. You got through day four. Probably one of the hardest so far because it, uh, you know, is an introduction to code and code is very confusing. So give yourself a hand, take a mental break, and we'll see in the next one where we're going to use a little more code to get those moving platforms to move back and forth. So uh, thanks for joining and happy creating.